Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much for the invitation to speak, uh, especially it's only two minutes away from my office, so it's fine. We have to travel far to get here. Uh, as the introduction says, I run the hacking team for KPMG. Been with the firm for about nine years. Prior to that, I worked for Oracle, Defcon, Polygram Records. Uh, so quite, quite a varied career in mainly in networks, computer networks. And I thought I'll give you today just an overview of what we do on a daily basis, just on anecdotes about what goes on when we tend to be we're either doing proactive testing, red teaming, hacking, or helping clients recover their networks after they've been breached. Just a bit of background, the type of works we do, are one of two, now three companies for CSG doing tailored assurance. So that's looking at high impact projects, IL3 and above the UK, from ships to satellites, phone systems to networks. Uh, again, it's uh, very bespoke tailored hacking. Also do telecoms assurance uh, for PSN, but just to give you a bit of background so we're not accountants. Uh, I'd like to back up with some of my stories with a bit of empirical evidence on, uh, there's, a lot, you know, there's enough FUD to be said about uh, uh, you know, the dreaded acronym of APT, but I tend to just stick to the basics of, of traditional good old hacking, uh, why is it all going wrong? I'd like to back that up with a, a bit of evidence. But obviously, over the last over the last week, uh, you know, there's two main teams in the world that, within a stroke, stroke can disable a banking network. One of them being the North Korean military, and the second one being the European Central Bank, with a letter to the Cypriot people saying they've got to tax them ten percent. <laughs> More effective with the letter, wasn't it? Uh, so some statistics, facts for the 2012 data loss barometer. Uh, and these facts, this is the first time we have seen hacking jump up as the major cause of data loss. Uh, outweighs usually it's human error, people losing CDs, memory sticks. Uh, but this year it's jumped up uh, quite massively. I expect that trend to continue, more so the fact that people's ability to detect uh, insiders in the network is increasing with wonderful tools and techniques out there. So I think it's always been there, just people now are recognizing it, but also some of the hacking teams around the world are getting much better at stealing. And a worrying trend on the, sorry, the focus is terribly good, uh, but on the, the male character, it shows technology services. That should worry us all, because from hosting providers, cloud providers, outsources, multi-tier outsources, they hold all your data, all our data. And uh, they're the largest category being targeted and actually successfully being breached, uh, then we're all in trouble. It's one of these industries, not uh, unlike banks, unlike utilities, very lightly regulated. Uh, so probably an area I'd like to see more focus on. And there's no industry uh, immune from the hacking, uh, from technology, media, banking, uh, industrial markets, uh, through it, all the large purple section Again, sorry for the resolution, but that is uh, hacking being the main, main cause of data loss. So very quickly going into the insights into an attack. But probably the biggest impact for citizens in the UK today, it's not, uh, it's not you, you know, uh, foreign espionage agents, armies. It's big business mafia gangs in Eastern Europe operating uh, out of India, running call centers in India. We probably deal, and we hear just anecdotal evidence, two to three cases per year uh, on, let's call it, uh, scareware, fake AV. So they will, and one going around at the minute, uh, will involve, you'll, you'll get a phone call, and they're hoping you to go, right, uh, we need to install one or two software, one of the examples up, uh, up above, at a team viewer or Abby. And they're just innocuous commercial bits of software, but that lets somebody to connect remotely to your PC. So people are duped into saying, oh right, we'll download this software, open it up, you tell them the connection string, then they go into your PC and start the stage stuff. The other one is the fake AV, where there's nothing wrong with your computer, but you'll get a flash up going, uh, your computer's infected, call this number now, it gives you a credit card, and it's 150 quid a pop. And this, to me, is having the biggest impact on citizens in the UK uh, of any form of cybercrime. I think this really does surpass some of the 
I would tend to call them overrated figures put out a few years ago uh, by the UK government for the loss of espionage. But this, this affects people's lives. It's my mum, my sister, your friends and family. And as you all know, and anybody works in policing, it's that fear of crime uh, that gets people worried more than actually the impact of the crime itself. There's quite a small amount of money, but it's big for some people. And it relies not only on computers, but human fallibility of being duped. Good old common fraud. So it's a, it's a big issue. We spend a lot of time looking at this. This is what it ends up with. Something to do with at least a high cr uh, the police crime unit or high crime crime unit. Thank you. Uh, this is just an example of the splice screen that will come up if your machine gets infected by a drive-by or a phishing email. So it warns up saying, right, your machine's now infected. You've got to call this number. It gives your credit card. We'll release it. Your, the machine's not infected. It just, Locks Internet Explorer to the people uh, without any skills on operating systems, then they do fall for it. Big business, you will get a call, usually from a help desk in India, ask you uh, uh, another variant of this uh, to open up remote desktop uh, through Windows, help, invite somebody in. They don't do anything to your PC, but they'll process that £150 fee for you. Uh, and usually, when people put on the phone afterwards, it's then the penny clicks that they've just been or the penny drops that have just been robbed. For a phishing email drive by, this is when we picked up, uh, actually, this is the end result. Uh, before, before this attack, this is the multi-stage attack that will come through. And more and more, we're seeing uh, multiple attacks rather than just one. So it will launch uh, executables, PDFs, fire them at your PC, hoping that Internet Explorer, Chrome, Mozilla, will render them, open them, and then the exploit will run uh, and take control of your PC. Uh, anybody's interested uh, would collect uh, the signatures for all the, uh, the viruses, Trojans, malware. Uh, we detect uh, both on our network, KPMG, but also our client networks, and we do assessments. So uh, share, please, uh, sharing, especially if you're any forms like the first, the emergency response teams. Uh, it's better if we share, and we're quite happy to share the signatures with people. Once you get these signatures, just pop them in your IDS. It'll flag up if they're on your network coming through. Now, we do make it easy for hackers. The first part of the, the talk was uh, a mention, just the general commercial uh, sort of retail element of, of hacking, but now moving into the more, the more malevolent side of hacking uh, where some of the, the Eastern European gangs operate at. And we do make it very easy for them. These findings, this is a summary of the 10 assessments we've done over the last year, we're called red teaming, where we will go in, proactively break into a client's network unannounced. And usually we will rely on the fact that there will be no little or any network segregation, very easy to get through to the AD controller or backup controller. We, people, then we grab the password hashes within a few seconds. Guaranteed, we will look, admin will still be there. They won't change it, the client will call admin. That's what we go for, go for. It won't be a complex password. We crack in a few seconds. Then we exist as admin or backup exec or one of the services. This is what hackers do anyway. So it's just we're mimicking the path that they will follow. Uh, and there'll be no alerting involved. Uh, so nobody will find us on the network. And this is hard guys break in. And if anybody's seen the Mandian report uh, coming out last year, they were talking about some networks that were compromised for two years. This is how they compromise them. They rely on good old tradition. If you look at an IT audit report uh, 10, 15 years ago, these would be the findings, probably not Wi-Fi, but they would be the findings. And again, with Wi-Fi, uh, the one in green, against people using very, very weak passwords that are easy to crack. Also, where we drop sensors on the network and we look at standard botnet malware traffic on the network, just look at the signatures leaving. Uh, and on average, we find a 4% infection rate. Uh, and it's you know, the old adage in hacking, it, it, it's you're, either, you're either sort of in operation or post up, you either realize you've been hacked or you, you haven't realized you've been hacked yet. Or somebody's, usually we find people on the network. The severity of or the type of people on the network difference in order from organization to organization. Obviously, if you're a US British defense company, you're a key target or a bank a key target, but many people are just infected by drive-by downloads on the network, then the hackers will jump through the network. Many of them operate now, you'll see, as uh, brokers, that category of 
Uh, a year ago, that was 5%. Brokers are growing. They will broker access to your network and sell it. Both mafia gangs, governments love this because it, again, aids in the non-attribution back to them that it was then originally broke in and stuff. So. so, just a few minutes left. So, uh, to offer up some advice, what is it people can do? What can you hopefully take away with you? Well, starting off for people, training is key. Training on people. Again, with the red team exercise, we will flood an organization with phishing emails. And if for the last uh, 10 assessments we did, we will get a 20% hit rate on people clicking our links. Uh, there's no technology you can defeat that. We're getting better, but it's human fallibility. They will click it and they're designed to make people click. Uh, contractors. The last three incidents that worked in this year didn't involve foreign governments, mafia gangs, disgruntled employees and contractors destroying IT. So don't forget about that one. Uh, it has a massive impact because they will have all the admin passwords. In the last two cases, they were pretending to be hackers. Trying to cover the tracks. Enhanced monitoring, DNS. Again, it sent me, we, we built a, a tool, a DNS timer tool. What we found on our networks and other networks, if we see an IP address, a call out going out to the internet, and that domain name's been registered within the last four hours, we know it's a hacker. We know it's a phishing scam that's worked. Uh, and we do predictive analysis, both on this and the naming conventions, obviously with dynamic uh, naming of D uh, DNS records. It's quite easy to spot, it's becoming better and better. It's just a little uni script we've uh, uh, built to look at that. Then moving on to intelligence-driven uh, security. Uh, look at, I'll give you an example now, uh, look at, sorry about the resolution, but uh, this is, we just grab stuff of PSBIN, of PSD, of all the other uh, just posting forms that hackers do. Just before it came up, I just ran one uh, .gov.uk domain, uh, and it'll just go through and search the uh, uh, the database that we, uh, that we have built up, and we constantly, you've got to constantly collect this information. If you put it, if a hacker puts it on pastebin, usually for credit cards or passwords to get them out through the firewall, if FTP is not open, uh, the guys at pastebin, you know, they'll they'll they've got a script to run. It should delete it within 60 seconds. Uh, so you've got to be very quick and collect this information. It's a, it's a fantastic source of intelligence. Uh, and then moving on to protect the crown jewels. Don't apply, again, going back to network segregation. Don't afford your coffee machine room reservation system the same amount of security as you do your blueprints, uh, your central key server, whether you're a mobile phone operator or a bank. Uh, unfortunately, we all do it in enterprise networks. You know, it's one policy size fits all. Uh, and if that's the case, you won't be able to defend your network. Your network's too big, your partner's networks are too big. Protect the crown jewels. Uh, another one for intelligence. Uh, this is just modern even Twitter feeds, and a lot of banks do this anyway, but we find a lot of people just simply don't do it. Uh, it's quite easy, there's loads of free tools out there. And once you start to aggregate this information out of LinkedIn, uh, out of uh, Twitter, out of Pastebin, then you build up and you can apply. There's plenty of great data analytics tools out there. I want to use this French one, Tulip, an open source one. Fantastic tools to just uh, apply some mathematical algorithms to work out what people are up to. Whatever you do, when you use, like I found a few weeks ago, they were hacked. And the, the words that they were looking for on the internet, as well as the report on hackers, was leaked by anonymous. So <laughs> if you do monitor, please treat that as your crown jewels. Uh, just to finish off, we're about to publish Publish and Be Damned 2013. I'm just finishing the last round of that now, so the, I've got to stop. Uh, the, it'll be out, have a look at the 2012 report. The new one will be out in about three weeks time where we're doing the FTSE V50, uh, and that's been me. Thank you very much.